This video was brought to you by Magic Spoon. My friends, you're used to me talking about how much I love Magic Spoon cereal. You've heard all the usual talking points about how it's fun and colorful and delicious, just like the sugary cereals of your childhood, but has zero grams of sugar and only four to five net grams of carbs per serving. You already know how it's packed with a whopping 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving, and how it's gluten-free, grain-free, has no artificial colors or sweeteners. You know it all by now. But Today, it's the texture I want to give special attention to. The crispity crunch of this cereal is simply unmatched. The mouthfeel, as it were, is on another level. And because of this, sometimes I eat it nice and slow, savoring the experience. Uh, I, I said sometimes. If you want to see for yourself, you can get $5 off a variety pack of Magic Spoon by hitting the link in the description and using the code Arlo, heading to magicspoon.com slash Arlo, or by using this QR code. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some more delectable crunching to do. Uh, is it? Hello, my friends, and welcome to another discussion-y kind of video. The Pikmin ones went over well, and I thought, why not do it? for other stuff too. Really no reason not to. They're always super fun. It, re it really does feel a, like a little Arlo cast kind of, let's just, heck, let's just call this an honorary episode of Arlo cast. Kane, roll the music. It's like, we'll just do it. Like, why not? Just say it's Arlo cast. Not in the title though, because if I put it in the title, then no one will watch it. It's a whole thing. The psychology of YouTube titles, it's a whole thing. Would you guys agree? Is that, it's just like weird, right? It's definitely You gotta be really careful about that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. Like if I put Arlo cast in the title, it would, like the views would chop in half. Anyway, <laughs> let me introduce, <laughs> let's introduce our guest for today. Our first guest, much like Mario, always shows up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty predictably, but you're always happy when he does. It's Ant Dude. Hello, Ant Dude. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I think I had the record for most Arlo casts. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so this is, it, it makes sense. It checks out, honestly. Yeah. And you've been in all of these discussion videos. Uh, sorry, she says. <laughs> yeah. Very sorry. Always, got bumped. <laughs> always on tap, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and our, our, our second guest is the, the always excellent Nathaniel Bandy. How are you doing Oh, today? hello. I am doing fantastic. I am tired, but I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk about Mario some more. Yeah, the Mario twins. That's what we're going to talk about. I, I asked you twins. this last time. They look at the same. They look at uh, the same. Wow. <laughs> not, not going into that. We'd be here all night. Uh, I asked this, no doubt, last time when you were on Arlo Cast, and I cannot remember the answer. Do you have a shortening? Is it Nathaniel? Is it Nathan? Is it Nate? What do we call you? Uh, Casually. I mean... Usually, I just tell people, like, pick what you want, but I guess, like, for the sake of what we're doing, just call me Nathan, just because it's a little bit shorter. Nathan. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So, uh, so we're, we're here to talk about the Mario Twins, and, uh, there, I mean, there's kind of a lot to talk about. You know, it's, it's easy to kind of just spiral. Let's just start with, like, very, very basic, uh, just, the, just, how you enjoying it? What, how do you, how you feeling about it? Ant, how you, how do you, just, what does this game make you feel? Uh, it's wonderful. Haha, <laughs> there's, there's the title. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's 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 fantastic. It's uh, the, to to be short and blunt, but not in like a way that's pleasing to the game. It's the first time a 2D Mario games had like a lot of effort put into it. I guess since 05, when the original New Super Mario Bros. came out, and that felt kind of fresh. Uh, just the amount of creativity, obviously, is is overflowing in this game. And on top of this, a typical Mario control scheme, because it plays pretty much identically to New Super Mario Bros. for the most part. It just, it melts together in this perfect package. Uh, I do have some issues with it that I, I think a lot of people just weren't, aren't talking about because it's still in like the afterglow of a hot new Mario game. But in general, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Oh, this is good. Can't wait to get into those. Um, yeah, yeah I, I would agree. It's just kind of like, it's like the design is always good with any of these games, but that's just, that is where they have stopped. Every single time they're like, the design is it and that's it, the level design, but like, they just, yeah, this is really the first time they've tried to do more than that since, I mean, forever. Like, I, I you could even just say since like, I don't know, Yoshi's Island? Like, what was the last like, really just interesting I feel like new... most creative was Mario Land 2. Like, that's going, I, I forget if, War, if Mario World came after that, but that that's like, one yes. of those two, like all the way that far back. Yeah. yeah Mario Land 2 yeah. did come out after Mario World. So there you um, go. Yeah. It, it is interesting, like, 
Because, you know, there has been a lot of 2D Mario games, but, like, it really does not feel like they tried to evolve at all ever since uh, Super not Mario World. Even, like, you know, on the Game Boy Advance, like, Game Boy Advance had the Mario Advance series, which those games are really great still. You know, they're, they're solid remakes of the original classic NES and SNES titles. But, again, they're just remakes. Like, this is the first time, like, if, it almost feels like uh, they're finally taking a uh, like a, a 3D Mario approach in terms of like trying to, you know, stand out and just what what am I what's the word I'm looking for? They're trying to like actually compete with like 2D platformers nowadays because I do feel like a lot of 2D platformers have far exceeded uh, Mario titles at this point in terms of just mm -hmm. like creativity and ingenuity. And this is like Nintendo Absolutely. finally stepping in, be like, all right, we're gonna give it our our all finally for once. No, it's right. Yeah, you you pioneer the genre. And then you just kind of sit back they just and sit go, there. Eh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They just didn't really, they just weren't really interested. And yeah, like you have all these, uh, even within their own company, you've got the DKC game. Like mm -hmm. it's just your own company is putting out these amazing platformers. You just don't care. You just like, it's Mario. Mm -hmm. When does he step up to the bat? They just like, no, it's, it, don't need to care. I mean, I, I think that's how it is. That's like, really it. I, the, I the new think Super so. Mario I think Bros. you're right. Games. Yeah, I mean, the new Super Mario Bros. games all sold incredibly well. Like, even Mario Bros. U Deluxe, I didn't that sell, like, 10 or 15 million units or a something lot. crazy yeah. like that. And that was just, like, the, the blandest Mario game of all time. It was just a yeah. port from the Wii U, and it still sold so well. I, I think they just got way too comfortable is what happened. Yeah, and it is nice that they eventually got here. It's like, I, I, I'm constantly, like, trying to just enjoy the game and not, like be reminded of like why did it take so long though like why why <laughs> yeah. is this only now when they decided let's also make it interesting because we like interesting gamers like interesting they don't always need it but they really do appreciate it you know yeah so i feel like this is like part of almost a grander topic where there's been like near the end of the switch's life i guess we could say this total shift in what is allowed to be in a mario game uh, I see a lot of people bringing this up, but the fact that we have this, which has so much creativity, they're remaking Mario RPG and Thousand Year Door, they're giving Pete their own, like her own game. It's like they're they're opening they're opening the floodgates to the level of creativity that Mario's just kind of lacked for a while because you know again broader topic. We know that the generic vibe of Mario has leaked into multiple side projects like Paper Mario and stuff over the years. So to see this is like the good first point of oh yeah. If we're creative, Mario can actually do a lot of cool things. Uh, so it's it's cool that this is where we are now. Yeah, it it, it is really nice. And uh, uh, before I, I get into more talking points here, I would like to bring up that uh, Nathan has uh, see I remembered I remembered which one <laughs> has a a unique relationship with this game, and indeed with a lot of Mario games. Why don't you remind everybody your, kind of your thing, the uh, reason you're here today. Yeah, I mean, so, before the game even came out, I had already played, like, 80 hours of the game. Um, oh I, I played a lot of the game before it came out. Um, and, uh, and the main reason for that, obviously, is to, is to make uh, videos for it. Uh, something that I do specialize in is trying to beat uh, Mario games in very bizarre ways that most people would not attempt. Uh, like, most recently, I tried to basically collect every single coin in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And the challenge, I was actually very interested how the challenge was going to be this time, because unlike most Mario games, there's no timer. So I didn't have to fight a timer yeah. while trying to get all the coins in every single level. But there were still some challenges that I had to overcome. Like, there was this one beach level where, like, a bunch of birds were, like, uh, they were only on screen for, like, two seconds. You're falling through the sky. And I had to, like, find a way to get all the coins while I was falling. And, we, and me and my friend had to come up with this, like, crazy strategy to collect them all. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I guess that's, so. yeah. That's did did you is it a spoiler to say like did you end up doing it? Uh, it is technically possible. Yes, there were a few levels that weren't possible. Uh, however, it didn't really matter because the rules of the challenge was, if I'm allowed to skip the level, then that still counts. If like if you can play the game from start to finish, every level you play, you get all the coins. That counted, and it was possible. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean like no, this guy, everybody, this guy has done. I just. I don't have a lot of endurance when it comes to like games and challenges. And I always have these like, oh, I should stream myself playing all these games. But even just the idea of like, I'm going to play all the way through these games. I don't even think I could do that. But like you, you really just, I don't know. Like what's, 
give an example of like what's what's like one of the craziest ones you've done. Probably the craziest thing, well, I'm currently working on this uh, 2D Mario Marathon thing, but like in the past, probably beating uh, Mario 64 DS without Mario, which is something that's really difficult, actually usually impossible to do because you need Mario in order to fight Bowser, but there are ways to basically exploit the game um, where you can basically like warp to the ceiling of a level and then drop down into specific levels to get through it. And that particular challenge was very, very challenging. Um, and I don't know, like there's, there's been a lot. There's been a lot of pretty crazy ones I've done over the years. Yeah, that's good. And then, and then, like right now, what you, you're doing a lot of different content for Mario Wonder, right? Like, yeah, yeah. What are you working on right now? Uh, the next, well, the next challenge we're doing is Mario Bros. Wonder backwards. So I've already talked to a couple <laughs> of modders that have been able to basically uh, take the flagpole. And then, like, the area that you spawn and swap them. And they also swap, Ooh. like, the pipe locations. Wow. And the whole point is, like, I'm not trying to beat the game, but it's more or less, it's more or less like an experiment. Like, okay, which levels could you beat if you were to, to beat them backwards? Because I always find that sometimes it leads to really interesting results. Sometimes you have to come up with really crazy strategies to get across, like, really big gaps or things like that. Um, as of right now, that's all that's in the works for challenges, but there'll probably be more for the game as time goes on. That's awesome. No, yeah. Like, he, he does just all these, like, just super long challenges, too. It's really cool. It seems that me and Ant Dude, however, we're just, we just like to play some Mario. Just we're playing video games. Yeah, more or less. So I thought yep. we'd get a good, like, spread of uh, experiences here. I played, um, the, like, so the entire game co-op, also. That's good. I've not that's done cool. that. I've not played any multiplayer. Yeah. Oh, how um, do you guys well, feel about... I was just because how do you guys feel about like the uh, the online or the multiplayer aspect of the game? I have not used it yet. I I'm kind of like waiting until I like beat most of the game and then I'll kind of just like turn it on to like experience mm -hmm. it a bit because I'm not really a fan of that kind of you know like I you know Dark Souls or whatever. I don't play online. I just don't want other people in my game. You know what I mean? Especially showing me the secrets mm -hmm. and stuff. So I'm really not interested in it except to just kind of experience it for the review eventually. So I've not even touched it. Okay, so yeah, I, I played the game, I feel like in, in the way Nintendo really wants, uh, like, the more casual crowd to play the game. So I played the entire game with a little shout out, Miss Fushi. Um, I played the entire game with her, and we had online on the entire time too, so we were also populating all the levels with ghosts. And uh, I, I think my general rule of thumb is that a platformer with, like, live co-op, I'm just never really a fan of. Uh, cause you gotta try to yeah, match the other person's speed, you either have to slow mm -hmm. down or speed up, and the camera only follows the main person. So I've, I've just never really been a fan, and there's very clearly levels that are not really built for it, like the badge challenges. Um, they're not built yeah. for, they're not built for co-op, like, at all. It's always no. very frustrating that you, you get dragged away, and the, the, the ghost mechanic is definitely better than the bubble mechanic, but it's still kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, the uh, ghost function with the, the online co-op stuff, I think is incredible. And I, I think is one of the coolest things Nintendo has done. Um, and I, I, I really like how this is implemented where, yeah, you'll just have a ghost of a character two or three joining you. It could be random. It could be another set of people uh, live together. It actually shows you if it's two people in the same room. And uh, the thing that's, oh, that's super cool, cool yeah, like, if, if you look and you play online, you'll see two icons directly next to each other, and that means they're in the same room. Uh, it's That's pretty awesome. cool. Uh, and it just leads for a lot of cool, when you're playing the game for the first time, a lot of cool moments of, like, men, like, later on, there are some secrets that I really didn't know where they were. And some people were super cool in that they would guide you, because you can do these four little basic emotes and then, like, kind of talk, almost, like, I guess, journey or whatever. I guess a bunch of games use that. Uh, but there have been a few secrets, like a few of the purple coins, the 10 purple coins, that I've been guided to by the help of some random person. Uh, there's those search party levels where you just, it's like just a scavenger hunt, and they've helped me out there. Um, it's cool too because you can place the standees, so if a character dies a lot, you can ghost up to the standee instead of a character, and if your standee helps someone else, you gain a few little friend points. Like, I can go on about this mode. Uh, it's honestly super cool. Uh, I guess, you know, we don't have actual online co-op, but whatever. I'm tired of complaining about not having that, honestly, because I think the implementation here it's is exhausting. super cool. exhausting. Yeah, I think something <laughs> else to note that I haven't really seen many people talk about is um, you can't interact with uh, your co-op partner. You can't throw right. them. You can't land on their head. And I honestly is that think... that true? 
I think that actually makes a huge difference with the experience because I found when I was doing co-op with like the other new Super Mario Bros. games, or even like Mario Maker 2 as an example, like being like running into other players, I always felt was like so intrusive and annoying. But uh, in this game, you know, that doesn't happen, and I feel like it makes for just a general uh, smoother experience. That's really good, because that's great to hear. It's always bothered me, like, accidentally picking up and throwing each other. I cannot stand it. It only gets in the way. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. And yeah. I was a little bit, uh, I was a little sad to see when I played the demo at PAX and I was playing with Yoshiller, and one of us was Yoshi, and it seems that that, that is still a way that you can interact, right? It's like if someone's Yoshi, oh, that's, you jump on their yeah. back. Yeah. That's a good point, yeah. So that still annoys me, but it's really great to hear that the rest it does not happen anymore because yeah there's there's no there's no excuse for that that's not fun <laughs> that is also that's like um, something else that's strange like since you bring up yoshi like why is yoshi easy mode yeah i i, I suppose thing. it's just because he's got a like his own ability he's always got the so. ability to eat enemies so it's kind of like even if he doesn't have a power up he's still kind of like has a but yeah it's weird that he doesn't take damage from enemies yeah i don't know i guess they just i, I kind of understand I, I think also Nintendo's really like marketed him as like the baby character of the franchise. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah kind of. You, know, yeah. you, you play like Yoshi's Crafted World, you're just like, yeah, that's kind of what they're pushing for now with Yoshi, but I don't know. I feel like maybe an option for him to just play normally and be able to get hit would have been nice. That would be nice, yeah, for anyone who just wants to have. Because Yoshi's fun to use, so yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Well, on the topic of characters, that was actually my first, uh, my first little question here. Nathan, mm -hmm. who's your favorite character? Who's your preferred? Who do you main? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be boring. I usually just play as Mario, but uh, I, I well rounded. I can't blame anyone. I have played. I mean, I have played extensively with most of the characters. I think it's so cool that uh, Nintendo added like Daisy and uh, you yes, know, a couple different Super Toad cool. characters. Um, I really, really hope they continue to go in that direction. And like the next game, we get finally get Wario and Waluigi. Let's get Pauline, Rosalina. Go crazy with it. Even if they all yeah. play the same, I think that would be awesome. But uh, I think I, DLC for this game would be pretty cool. Add in some yeah. characters later, that'd be amazing. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. All right, Ant Dude, who, who do you who do you main? Yeah, whenever I have the choice for something like this, it, it's Luigi. Uh, I just I love Luigi so much because he actually has a character and he's actually a person. He's actually like, mm -hmm. has a personality. So I just love yeah. playing as Luigi. Uh, going through and all the challenges, knowing he's scared the whole time or pissed off actually, because if you run, he's like shockingly upset like the entire time. Um, it's and got I, emotional yeah, the, regulation issues. Right, right. <laughs> I, uh, I love that Daisy's in there too. Like that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, I agree. I think more characters the better. I think it would be kind of neat if they went back to having every character play slightly differently. I feel like in a group dynamic, there's definitely potential there. Maybe that's too complex of an idea. I don't know. Uh, Still weird also that they'll never give the normal Toad a spotlight. I have nothing but respect for Buck and Barry and Olive Gold. I am a top supporter of those two, but it is weird that the red Toad no with red blue toad. like yeah. vest just never shows up ever again. Huh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it is cool. It makes sense for the family that all the characters play the same, but yeah, I'm a big Luigi guy. You know, it's funny. I, I haven't played around with a lot of the characters. I didn't know that they mostly play the same. I assumed that oh, not even mostly like they, they completely are completely besides the same. like the Yoshis wow. and Nabbit, they play exactly the same. Yeah, I would have completely assumed that Luigi yeah. jumped a little bit higher at the very, very least. Um, nope. So interesting. So, that, so yeah, I've just been doing Blue Toad. I think but apparently that's there's no <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think maybe the reason for that is because of the badge system, because you can kind of get some of the characters specific abilities with the badges that you can yeah. unlock. Yeah, that makes sense. That that does make sense. It's it's almost like it would be a little too complicated. There's almost too many loadouts if right. the characters were that different and they could have the badges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, I because of of a uh, 3D world, I just go with Toad just cuz I'm like used to it. I go Blue Toad. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, apparently th there was no, ba you know, in in 3D world he runs faster, but apparently that's not a thing here. I, yeah. I've just been picking Toad just to pick Toad, I guess. <laughs> but I like him; makes me laugh. Just like oh no, no is he? Oh man! <laughs> like I love you it. You can't do a Toad voice without screaming at the top of your lungs. It's impossible. That's the hard thing. You have to <laughs> dedicate to it fully, and then you're just like blasting the microphone. Yep. <laughs> Let me just do it once. Hold on, I'll step back. Oh, oh, oh. here we go. Oh, man! There we go. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, visuals. 
I really just like, I, I can't get over the visuals in this game. It's like, there's definitely a lot of other games. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you compare this game to Tropical Freeze just because they're two very similar things. They're like two of the best platformers ever. Um, Tropical Freeze definitely has like a more natural feel, but it's almost like the cleanness of these visuals itself is just so appealing to me. It's so smooth. It's, mm -hmm. is that, is it just, is it is satisfying to you as it is to me? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've stared at new Super Mario Bros. animations for so many years, so, like, finally getting to look at something that just looks a lot nicer and just ha is every everything is way more expressive. Not even just the characters, all the enemies are more expressive, everything. too. Everything. The backgrounds look incredible. There's so many little sparkly details and just all sorts of... Everything just looks amazing in the game. Even, like, the UI looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super duper good. I, I like, I can't, I hope that the next Nintendo system, I hope we get a bunch of like upscales or remasters or whatever. I like, I want to see this game in 4K so bad. Yeah, it deserves it. Yeah, I think uh, I'm fine with Mario continuing to have the style where it, it, it is built with tiles, but it, it just doesn't feel as artificial as uh, New Super Mario Bros. did. Just the, yeah. the set pieces with the backgrounds and the colors that are used. Like if you real if you really were annoying and analyzed it, it's still as tile by tile as any 2D Mario game. But the way everything comes together, um, it, it just it definitely satisfying is a good word for it. It just feels a lot more satisfying. And just every time you stop and look at the game, it's it's a beautiful vista. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like they've always been kind of tile based, but it used to feel like it was just a limitation and just a cost saving measure. Mm -hmm. But here, the way that it's used, it's actually a strength because it mm -hmm. because it is so clean, so geometrically perfect that when you actually add in that expression and that style into it, now you're like, oh, this is a thing. Now this is like a, this is a unique identity that this game has. It's and the a, backgrounds a, are super nice too. Like. I'm obsessed Man, like, with if, the backgrounds. If you ever stop and really just, I'm telling everyone out there watching, just really stop and look at the background. Like, it's gorgeous. Um, even, like, just in the first level, the, the stages go from day to, like, sunset, and it's it's gorgeous. Um, and then there's, like, some of the geometry used in the level. I'm forgetting the names of the levels, but the one that's, like, the giant waterfall where everything's, like, a diamond. I love it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's, it's fantastic looking. The snow levels look great. Like, everything just looks great. They don't look cookie cutter. It's great. No, they every area has its own unique identity. The waterfall one, in particular, it's kind of like it's got that that isometric cube yeah. kind of pattern thing. But it goes further than that, and it's like there are elements of the level where, because like that, it's almost like an illusion. It kind of breaks, you know, like the the texture kind of breaks if you move the camera a little bit. But it's mm -hmm. like they lean into that. Yeah. So that areas of the world are like kind of shifty and warpy, but yep. it like it, it works for it. It's almost like a purposeful style kind of thing. It's super weird. I can't get over it. Yeah. And mm. it, it's such a it's such a minor thing. But one of the things I've always loved about like Super Mario World is that it, it emphasized trying to play the game in like a place. It tried to have some world building with Dinosaur Island and the new Super Mario Bros. games lacked that completely. But combined with the world of the Petal Isles and all of the worlds attached to it, um, it just it made the world just feel more alive and I think I personally think that stuff is important And I think that's something that this game excelled at. Also, it's extremely important. It's 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 super important mm -hmm. And the pedals aisle music is also fantastic Like it's mm -hmm. so soothing and relaxing. It's probably like my favorite song in the whole game is pedal aisles It's really 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 good. Yeah I mean the whole just like the feel of the world and oh my gosh like can we just talk about the world map? Yeah, it's just great. the fact yeah. that it's interesting. It's it's not like it's not so rigid as it used to be. You can just find a little secret and like, oh, what's over here? I, just some more levels. Like it's just it's there's just some natural. more levels. Yeah. There's Captain approach. Toad shows up. Yeah, yeah. Captain there's Toad just is secrets. like hidden. You just there, find there approaches. The approach is so interesting because it it's got like like very uh, linear sec segments in some areas, but a lot of it is open world. And like you said, like there's so many just like weird. Uh, secrets that you can just find all over the place, and it's all interconnected too. It's mm -hmm. just so nice. It's very, very uh, refreshing. Yeah, it's it's terrific. Uh, do either of you have uh, just like a, whether it's visually or mechanically, just a favorite area of the game? Nathan, what about you? Definitely the desert place. Um, there's just, I think um, the secrets there are a lot of fun to find. My favorite part is definitely the fact that like some levels start off looking like uh, some sort of mirage and then they just kind of appear yeah. when you get close enough. I'm like, oh, that's so clever. And also it's a castle 
in the desert, sandcastle. Yep. I was like, yep, I like that too. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it's just it's, a lot of really, a lot of clever stuff in that hub world. Yeah, yeah I mean, about I'll, you, Ant? I'll bounce off that. I think the desert was super cool. Picking out levels from the mirages was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but another world that was great is the lava world. The fact that it was like, like level, like layers, like floors, and you were kept going up and down them. I thought was a pretty clever idea. Um, yeah. And then just for for overworld aesthetic, like the Captain Toad segments, like it's so cool that there's a Captain Toad segment really on in the game and it shows you the rest, like a portion of the Petal Isles. And again, comparing to Mario World, one of my favorite parts about that game is when you go down a mysterious pipe and then you suddenly find yourself on like this, this cliff by the Valley of Bowser and you get just a snippet of what the later levels of the game are gonna kind of bring you to. And the fact that all the Captain Toad segments just show you a, sneg a segment of a world you haven't seen yet, I think that's awesome. No, it's perfect. It's, it's yeah, it's the feel thing. It's, it's what the maps have just been missing all mm -hmm. of these years. It's just like, why, why is it that the games on the NES and Super NES had such more interesting maps? I can't fathom it. I just don't understand it. It was so, so annoying really... when New Super Mario Bros. U, Nintendo was like, listen, we, we listened to the complaints. We made the world interconnected, but it didn't matter. It just felt like all the normal worlds just put together by duct tape. But this feels yeah. like things were properly connected. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And yeah, it's funny. The desert. That's the one I was going to say, too. Just the concept of like some levels. It's a mirage and you and there's just so many little secrets to find. And I don't know. I really like it. And then I really do just like Petal Isles. Just like the yeah. uh, just the color. Uh, the color in this game is so just incredible. Mm -hmm. It's night and day. Mm -hmm. Like even, you know, even not considering like visual style and stuff. Just look at the color palette versus New Super Mario Brothers U. Yeah, it's it's like it manages to use rainbow. every single color like you can ever think of, but it, it, it feels <laughs> cohesive. Yeah. And and it does make sense because perfect segue, uh, the whole wonder thing, the whole entire theme of the game is just like surprise. It's really that's what it is. It's just surprise. And so you have this uh, this wonder mechanic. And uh, I think, OK, well, first, I would just want to say what. What are you? What are some of your favorites? Some of the standouts. If if there's like a super secret level or like a super late game thing, let's not spoil it. But like, mm -hmm. as far okay. as like the levels that everyone is gonna play through a normal playthrough, like what, what's what's a real standout wonder effect? So, Ant. Uh, the first one that came to mind immediately was turning into a Goomba. Uh huh. Oh, that's a great uh, one. I think I think the transfer. I think the enemy transformations in general are really good. But the fact that the turn into the Goomba and it becomes a stealth level for the one with the what the the Mamas, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was clever because like the level is cl is smart in showing you a mama eating a Goomba immediately and you're like, ha, idiot. And then you turn into a Goomba. And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> now I'm the idiot. Oh, no, this is going to be terrifying. Uh, so that was the first. That's the first one that came to my mind. But in general, like all the wonders were great. There's so many good ones to choose from. Uh, Nathan, what about yeah. you? What's a, what's some standouts? All right, so this one is a little bit later in the game. But I don't I don't think it's really a spoiler because it's in the last world, but it just comes completely out of nowhere. I think it's the level where like you have to pull, there's like this Goomba and you have to like use this pulley and then the water effect happens. And then out of nowhere, this massive statue or spike statue just lifts out of the ground, like in the background and starts hurling like meteors at oh, you. Yeah. And you have to avoid them for like, I think like a full minute or something. I'm just like, what is going on? Where did all this come from? <laughs> And then, um, I guess, like, another standout one is, like, the quiz one, where you just have to answer. I was just going to say, you reminded me of that one. Yeah. Yes. The quiz is also, like, such a, a weird and, and random one. Like, when I got to the quiz one, all I could think of was, like, Super Paper Mario. And just yeah. how, like, uh, how much it, like, really tried to, like, change your expectations uh, of the game. Mm -hmm. So, those are probably, yeah, like, it, my it favorites. Tries... It, the game, it's just... The, the scope, just the variety of these effects. Sometimes it's so simple. Sometimes it's like, you got these enemies. Now the wonder effect is the enemies are a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes mm -hmm. it's just like, you're top down mode now. This is a Zelda game now. Yep. Like, oh, those are so I, that fun. one, yeah. my jaw hit the floor the first time that happened. I don't, just something about that. Something about just all of a sudden it's a top down game. I could not believe it. I would have never seen that coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the singing piranha plants. I know that's like the famous one, but like it really is I wish there really were more musical incredible. levels. I know there's a few musical levels in the game. It's not just the piranha plant one, but man, I really wanted more. 
Yeah, the music like, was sorry, so but I'm great. just insatiable. I think those are so cool. Yeah, yeah. make a whole game. This is just yeah. music levels. The, uh, the ninji dance party was probably my favorite music level. Cause it Mario has a different animation when he jumps with the timing. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah and like the character is like, well, this is technically like with the rhythm badge, I guess, but like they'll count down as you're jumping with the song. Mm -hmm. Which is, is that's just adorable on its own. And then like that whole level is just so much fun to just like run through. You got ninjis hitting tambourines, the piranha plants are jamming <laughs> out. Like it's just like we talked about earlier. Like the expressive animations just add so much life to the game. Like it's just wonderful. It's a it's it's fun to see when whenever in any game or anything, it's fun to see when Nintendo takes it that much further than they need to, you know. I, it's almost like they're it's almost like they're making up for all of the years of really not putting in a lot of effort as far as the creativity and expressiveness goes. They're like, let's it just, like doesn't it feel like they crammed like three games worth of expressiveness into one? Like the little details, they don't stop. They just never stop. The little teeny tiny little animations and things, it's constant. Mm -hmm. I went back and looked at just watched some new Super Mario Bros. U footage, and I was that comparison is rough to go back to it's because rough. man, it's like almost every single frame of uh, any of the characters in Wonder, like they, they they're just so they it's so expressive, just bouncing off of things. They have like a little huzzah pose a lot of times. Uh, I will say it's a little upsetting that only, I think only Mario and Luigi have animations when they're going through pipes. The princesses don't and the toads don't. Uh, that's a little upsetting. I never even uh, noticed that. That's Cause well, though. cause when Mario and Luigi go through the pipe, they like, they leave their hat and then they grab their hat back and it's, it's very cute. Um, the princesses, I don't think they don't do them with their crowns. Toads don't do anything. There's not, not a whole level of uniformity, but it's very, very minor. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's true. I think even in the trailers, we could see that, like, Mario has this, like, the, the you know, the thing where the face is playing to the camera and he's he's kind of uh, imitating the old 2D sprites. And you don't really get that as much with the other characters. They, they look a lot more normal. Still better. Still a lot better than New Super Mario Brothers. But, yeah. like, yeah, that's definitely a place they could improve in the next game. For sure. So here, here's a question about, uh, to go back to the, the wonder element, the wonder mechanic thing. Um, I, the game came out pretty recently and I'm still like trying to ask myself, is this, like how much of the game's enjoyment comes from the surprise element and is it going to hold up as well? I mean, like I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty darn sure this is just a really genuinely amazing game, but I'm trying to think like, months and even years from now, if we're replaying this game, how much of that enjoyment is lessened because, you know, you don't have like the, the surprise, the wonder of like, what's this one gonna do? Do you think that that could sort of hurt the game's overall lasting appeal at all? Or is this still just like a perfect mm -hmm. Mario game, Nathan? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question because it's really hard to answer that right now because, you know, recency bias is a thing. Obviously, everyone loves the the wonder effect uh, and all the levels, how they're all, like, different. Um, I'm curious how it's going to be because, you know, I've played through the game uh, a couple of times at this point. I've played, uh, you know, some levels, like, multiple times over, and I found myself naturally avoiding some of the seeds if they kind of slow down the pacing of the game. But then some of them I'll purposefully hit because I want to experience the wonder effect in the level. So, honestly, it's really hard to say. I think it really comes down to how much the Wonder Seeds affect the general flow and pacing of the game. Which, I don't it, it's gonna, I think it's gonna vary depending on what the level is. Yeah, I didn't think about this until just now, until you said that. But, like, the, the idea of, like, avoiding the Wonder Seeds, sometimes, like, when playing through for the first time, sometimes the effect would be so brief, and I would be like, oh, man. I was really having fun. That that stopped before it even really got going. And now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, but isn't that just gonna make repeat playthroughs like even better? Because like, I'm, I'm still gonna be a little bit hungry for some of these gimmicks, you know? Right. So it'll be like, I will be eager to jump through and, and play through the whole thing again. That's, and I, that's interesting. Yeah. I really gotta chew on that one. And I, th I think something else that's also worth mentioning is on repeat playthroughs, you know, most people are gonna probably wait two, three years before they play the game again they're going to forget what a lot of the wonder effects were, where they were located. So I think people will still want to go after them when they're running through the game again. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's probably for the most part going to end up aging pretty well, but there could be parts of the game 
where it, it slows it down a bit much, but it's really hard to say right now. Yeah, I do love that every single level has the wonder effect. Like, they didn't save it for like, the special level before the castle is just like mm. every single one. How many levels are in this game? A hundred twenty uh, something? It's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of unique wonder effects. And like, sure, there are a couple that are like repeated, but they're always repeated in like new and interesting ways. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Ant, dude? What do you think about that whole thing? Yeah, so I, I just now started my second playthrough because uh, I, I, I had that same thought and I was curious to now go through the game ex knowing what to expect. And there are definitely some wonder effects in, in general. Like even on my first time through, I thought were kind of whatever. Like I think the ones where it's the, the star falls and the stars just fall down. You have like endless invincibility, super short. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. Those those seemed like kind of thoughtless. They were just kind of, I don't know. I thought they were whatever. They'll throw away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's one like really early on with the, the hoppos they're called where they have like the one really big hoppo and there's a wonder seed on the hoppo and that wonder effect is like the shortest one in the game. It takes like five seconds to get to. Yeah. Um, so there's a few that I'm just like, eh. But in in general, if I, I think because there's some platforming and some challenge attached to like all of them, like going back to the Goomba, the fact that there's like stealth segments, there's some platforming where you can barely make a jump. Uh, you have the ones where he plays the hoppy cat and you're going down like the, the zip lines or whatever. I think there's enough interesting platforming there that I think in the long term, it, the surprise will be gone, but it'll still just be genu genuine fun platforming. Just with a couple like, oh God, this one. Like I imagine on replays, while the quiz is really cool, that's probably like, okay, we gotta, we gotta do this again. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's like a ton of questions and I, I don't know. Yeah, like, like, yeah, that's that, that's a good point is that it's, um even if you, the even if the surprise is gone, it's still just variety. It's just variety of gameplay. And, you know, Mario is Mario and plays like Mario, but now you have this game that 120 whatever times you get to just play it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to add a lot of replay value, and which is another perfect segue into another thing that gives this game so much replayability, so much variety, and it's the badges. What are mm. your thoughts on the badges, Mr. Dude? Interesting. So you had optimism coming into this, and this is one of my complaints. Uh, oh my, I, is this the thing? Oh. Is this the thing? That it's, is this it, I mean, it's one, one of the things, I think. Uh, Ooh, one of the things. I mean, I don't know. I, I think the badge system is very undercooked. Uh, I I don't know. I, I didn't change it at all from the floating cap throughout the entire game until really? I got the spin jump from Galaxy, and, and then I just used that. Like, I just used a platforming benefit. It would be cool if you could stack multiple my immediate comparison yeah. there's probably a bunch of games that do this like i know yoshi i think woolly world had a badge system but like my immediate comparison was uh ukulele and the impossible layer of all games because that game kind of had a badge system but you were able to equip three and you can like really customize your experience here it's either you have like an extra boost of platforming or i, I don't know you can get some extra coins you could you can make yourself invisible which i don't that's not fun. <laughs> I don't. I don't see the just, joy. Just adds in that challenge one. for people that there's are like the, yeah, there's like the vertical really wall jump, which is cool. But it's like a lot of the levels are not built around it. I like the badge challenge stuff because those are levels built around the badges. But in general, I can't think of a single instance where I would have used the vertical wall jump or the floating jump, uh, or like the crouch jump from Mario 2. Like I can't think of any instance where I would want that. There's the support badges too, where you can get extra, there's like extra platforms that can pop up. Uh, so you can make the game even easier. Makes sense, like that one makes sense, but just, I don't know. It just felt like they were filling a quota and it doesn't feel really fleshed out. Uh, just not not a fan of it, honestly. Interesting. What about yeah. you, Nathan? Um. I kind of understand what you're saying by, uh, by that. I, I do think a lot of the badges are kind of like a waste like it um the, i don't know is it a spoiler to talk about the final the badge oh badges? boy oh uh, i don't yeah. know what the final badge let's not talk about that one. okay oh, well i'll just say uh the last handful of badges you get are completely useless they don't really do anything to enhance the game yeah uh and i, I do think that you know some of the badges like like you mentioned where like you can just get more coins from enemies or if you jump to the rhythm of the song you get coins badges like that are kind of pointless, but I do feel like at the same time, they do kind of spice up uh, some of the levels. Um, now, I, I personally love the badge system, but I do definitely think it could be built on. There could be more abilities that are introduced in the future. 
Like, just as an example, just having, like, uh, a floating badge where you can float like Peach, but with any character, I think that would yeah. be fantastic. And I, I really love, like, the boosting spin jump. You get a mid-air jump. Um, and the floating, uh, whatever it was called, floating air the cap, yeah. something. The cap jump, of course, parachute. Then there's one where you, like, jump like Luigi. That was kind of cool. Um, I like the badge system, but I do st I do feel like probably, like, half of the badges you will never touch, ever. Yeah, I but. think the game would have benefited from allowing to equip, like, equip maybe two at a time. I think because, two, yes. That would have been a really, really great yeah, idea. Because I would love, because I never want to sacrifice the ability to float. Like, it's a platformer. I want to have that security. That's why I liked right. you. I mean, you can do the spin naturally from New Super Mario Bros. for a little bit of air. You can get the galaxy spin. Like, I, I always just wanted that extra security that I was going to nail my jump. But if I could do that and the grappling vine, I would be all in. If I could do that and the dolphin kick, I'd be all in. But having to sacrifice the platforming, I just never wanted to do it because it's a platformer. I wanted the flexibility right. to mess up a jump every once in a while. I do have a nitpick about one specific badge, the dolphin kick. I don't really like how it controls. I personally think the penguin suit, still from the New Super <laughs> Mario Bros. games, controls a lot better than the dolphin kick. Like, it is kind of exhilarating to get that nice boost of speed in the water but it just doesn't feel as smooth. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't yeah, know. I, uh, I I, definitely, I'll, I, I wanna not go too deep into it because I will eventually do a review for this game. Uh, but I, I see where you're coming from, Ant, and I do I do think it does have, it is fairly limited. I, I feel like there was never gonna be another way that Nintendo was gonna do it because they, they want Mario to be very simple and to be sure. controlled with very few buttons. And so introducing this badge thing itself was already a big stretch for them. Yeah. So I, I, I definitely get why they only let you do one at a time. I do think multiple would be really, really cool. I think it would be cool if there were like, I feel like, I mean, this would increase replayability and everything too, is like have little challenges within the levels, like beat this level with this badge or or like uh, a way to randomize what badge you get going into a level or something like that. Cause it is true that a lot of the badges boil down to the same thing. It's just get a little more air. Yeah. It's jump a little mm -hmm. higher, you know? And, and yeah, the, the one that I keep on pretty much all the time is yeah, the other, the spin, you spin yeah. up a little bit higher. Cause like you could, there's the double jump that makes you higher, but like why I could just press the button to get that bit of yeah. air whenever I want to. Um, so it is true. There's a lot of them that aren't really super useful or like they could be useful, you know, coin magnet, that could be a thing, but other ones are more useful. It's always going to be more useful to have something that lets you jump higher because then you can get play. And that's the other problem with it too, is like, it's, it's like the levels are built for not badges. So when yeah. you do have the badge, you're just like, oh, well, I don't have to bounce on this enemy in this super tricky way to get this. I just use my, I just press a button and I'm up there. Yeah. Um, so there's a bit of a problem. I But I still, even not considering all the balancing and the worthiness of the badges and stuff, even just the idea of having these extra little abilities, I feel just makes the game that much more fun. Even just having the little spin jump thing, I ju it just makes the game fun. I just love having it. I love having these... Uh, and like the, the grapple vine, I really don't use it very much, but it's just such a cool idea. It's true, the wall jump one... I want to use more and I think it's really cool. It's almost like you have to like do a playthrough or be like, I'm going to do this world with only yeah. this badge mm -hmm. or something. It's, it's really good for people who want to like challenge themselves. Might be fun to stream and then like everybody votes on what badge you use yeah. or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely got some limitations, but I think overall what it does for the game is really, really, really cool. I, I, I think it's great. I think especially just for like options, even if I'm not super interested in a lot of these badges, giving people the options, especially if they want to have their own little challenge things, um, I feel like that adds a tremendous amount of value. And just the just playing a Mario game where you can control differently is just very novel to me still, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, a and, very and good step in the right direction, I would say. Like, I really, really hope they continue to improve on the badge system. Uh, even if they never allow us to do more than one badge, like, if they can at least get more creative with the badges in future 2D Mario games, like, that would be, you know, fine enough for me. And, man, yeah, yeah just, think... just make more challenge levels. Like, all my complaints yes, aside, the badge challenge too. levels are sick. And yes! I, yep. In any platformer, I just want levels that test my challenges, and I won't spoil it, but some of the very final levels of the game 
do things that I wish the entire game had more of. Uh, I think Nathan knows what I'm talking about. Um, yes, yes, I do. And I, I wish there were there was more of that. And who knows, there could be DLC. Uh, but uh, yeah, my my point still stands. The badges are cool. There's definitely some flexibility there because it's a, yeah, it's their first time having a customizable like 2D Mario game. Yeah, you are definitely right. There need to be more badge challenges because they were almost like. It was like, here, this is how you earn the badge, or this is how you make sure that you know how to use it. And it's like, no, and this, the prince is like, is oh, this want. badge is great. You want to put it on? I'm like, oh, I'm good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the no, levels thanks. were over like before they really got started, it felt like. I mean, there's only, for most badges, it was like two levels per yeah. badge. And the first one is just getting used to it. The second one, a little more challenging, but again, it was very, very short, and then that's basically it. Like, there's mm -hmm. there's not much after that. Yeah, because, like, that's what's great about the levels, is you have to wear the badge. That's what makes it fun. We just need more of that. We need yes. more things where it's like, here is a very specific and very tricky challenge for this one badge, because then that opens up a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities. So that would be great if there was some kind of DLC, more like extra tricky badge challenges or something. That would be mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so the bad, so that's the badges, and uh, I, I, I definitely want to say, I, uh, bosses, I really love this game, but what happened? The terrible. What? I don't know. Hap what happened? The terrible. I'm they not gonna be nice to about the it. Bosses. The terrible. They just gave up. I. It's so they jarring. They just gave up. <laughs> it's bizarre. <laughs> the game is so amazing and creative and perfect. It's almost like a perfect video game. There are I, very few games that I would say are like basically perfect. And this game is just like, they just forgot the bosses. They forgot to put them in. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't believe I'm at a position where I, I am begging for the Koopalings. Uh, like, oh my God, there are seven worlds in this game. How did you not come up with the crazy idea for each of the seven Koopalings and just make them the bosses. I, I don't get it. I hate the Koopalings because they're always so predictable, but this was mm -hmm. their chance to, no, I thought the same thing. This is a chance to take the Koopalings and do something interesting with them because each yeah. one has their own little gimmick, their own little personality. Oh, what happens when each one gets a wonder flower and they have yeah. a wonder effect? How does that work? They just did Open not do incredible. that. Not even yeah. Kamek is a boss. No, it's not even can't we see Kamek? He spawns the airships, but you you can't fight him. Why not? It's so what? <laughs> like what happened? No, I, I I don't get it. Bowser Jr. shows up a couple times, has some mildly interesting mechanics, and then some levels end with the big Bowser robot that you're like, oh, this is gonna be a cool boss. No, you terrible. just jump on the button. It's, it's not even three seconds. They're terrible. You just jump on the button, and then some worlds just don't have anything. Yeah, yeah. I they will, just end. That that is like the most jarring part of the game. I, it's like I think it's worlds three and worlds five. You just get so. to the end and then there's a royal seed. You're like, okay, where's the boss? Oh, there is no boss. What do you mean there's no boss? It's the end of the world. That's like the perfect sense. time for like another type of badge challenge level. Because yes. like what's neat <laughs> is that the worlds have mini stories. So like it kind of makes sense like in the game story why there's no castle, but. They, they, they just hand them to you. They just hand you a... Also, the worlds start with handing you a wonder seed, and that's a whole other, like, why are we doing this? Uh, yeah, why did yeah, they do that? It seemed very unnecessary. Yeah, the bosses... I'm more offended by the airship bosses, because I remember going into the first one like, oh, this looks... Cr oh, it's dumb. No, it's it's super cool. It's like, oh my gosh, there's going to be some kind of thing where I got to I gotta throw the little things up, or, oh, it's spitting out bob bombs. I'm going to have to throw it in its mouth. No, you... Like, I'm... I'm sitting there failing to do it because I'm not realizing it really is just as simple as jump switch. up and hit the button. Yeah. I'm like trying to figure yeah. out what to do because I assume there is something to do and there isn't. The uh, the airship bosses, I don't know if this is a weird comparison, but they really reminded me of like some of the uh, the Sonic CD bosses or like just any of the 2D oh Sonic God, the bosses. Treadmill ones? Yeah, like the treadmill boss. I'm like, this is literally yeah. the Sonic treadmill boss, but we're fighting yeah. it like two or three times in the game. It's super weird. I don't, I just don't get it. Every other Mario, even the new Super Mario, like they at least have bosses. They're not super inspired. They're not amazing, but they're there. Yeah. You can always expect to fight a boss at the end of a world and it's going to be something. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I This was such an opportunity. It's a genuine wonder because I can, I'm can i cool with the game obviously trying a whole bunch of new things and I'm fine with some levels not even having bosses. But man, the new the Wonder Bowser Jr. costume is sick. 
uh, cause like the, the bandana turns into an actual- So cool. That's really cool. But Super yeah, the, cool. As boss fight's bad. It's just flat out bad. It's, I, man, I'd have to go back to the new Super Mario Bros, but I, I, I feel like I would even like the new Super Mario Bros bosses. They are better. Yeah, I mean, new Super Mario Bros, as bland as those games are, at least the DS one in particular has creative bosses. Like it has, you fight a Monty Mole inside a big tank. There is Lekitu, but he shoots thunder at you. You've got yeah. a huge Peter Goomba. Piranha. There's the, yeah, the cheap skipper. It's uh, it's like a huge, yeah, there's Petey Piranha. There's like the, the really big purple fish thing called cheap skipper. Yeah. Um, even like basic stuff like that. And you know what's so weird is like there's so many brand new enemies in this game. Why not just use reuse your enemies and then like give them the oh a wonder effect? They could That's have done all the Yoshi's Island thing with Kamek. Just have exactly. Kamek come in and have like here, the hoppy cap now is crazy. Like there we go. Right. Like, that could have been every boss. Island. Yeah. That That's could have been every single one. Kamek comes in, gives them a wonder flower, and boom, now you get a crazy version of this enemy. That's all yeah. they had to do. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It, it's just so weird and, and just jarring. I, I will yeah, say also, just for like, very, very minor, I, the, the final boss is actually good. Yes, um, yes, But definitely. even still, it like kind of ends too soon. It does. I'll say that much to prevent spoilers in the conversation, but it is the best boss in the game. It just ends way too soon. So just, just whoever was designing phase. bosses was, here was just not on their game. Yeah, I was begging for a, a final phase. I, yeah. I was. Uh, it was very good though. Um, so so that's a, that's a nice little topic to kind of wrap things up here is, uh, I, I honestly feel that this is a galaxy situation where the concept, well, I felt the same thing about Odyssey too, but I guess they didn't, but like this concept is so good. I want to see a sequel, especially because, I mean, like just, it's the wonder thing. You could do it infinite numbers of times, you know, like, and they talked about how they had like 2000 ideas for this or something, but like, I, I would love to see the badge system tweaked a little bit. I think that's a great thing they could, they could do going forward. Um, you know, a sequel with better bosses. Uh, what, what kind of, like, what would you like to, would you like to see a sequel and what would you like to see the game do in a sequel? Nathan. Hmm. Um, I mean, honestly, like for a sequel, obviously just better bosses would be nice. Definitely more challenging levels. Uh, outside of that, if they could just keep coming up with interesting, uh, wonder effect ideas, I mean, that would be fine with me. What I'm actually more interested in though, uh, compared to just a sequel to this, is applying um, what's been done here to a 3D Mario game. Like, what would the wonder effect look like in a 3D Mario title? Uh, I feel like that drooling. that could get even crazier, and I would be, I'm almost, in a weird way, kind of expecting something like that in the next 3D Mario, because I think they're onto something really good here. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very curious to see what's going to be coming up next with either 2D or 3D Mario. That's really cool. Could you imagine, sort of an aside, but could you imagine them doing a 3D sequel to a 2D game? Oh, that would be so cool. That would, that be, would be weird. That would, that would be, be super so weird. weird. But that you, would be you perfectly could have, You could have the wonder effects changing the perspective of the game outright. It could start Ooh. 2D, and then you get the wonder flower. Actually, yeah, what the 3D. hell? Just make, just make a game that's both. It's actually what are we doing? Just make a 2D and 3D Mario game. Just have 3D world levels and wonder levels in the same game. It's actually a really that cool would be idea. Amazing. Or yeah, even, what the hell are we doing? or even we, it's, we, it takes a Super Paper Mario approach where like you can play the same level in 2D and in 3D. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that could work too. That is cool. That is awesome. And then I just, uh, I also just, I just don't want Bowser again. I love Bowser, but I'm, I'm so tired. Bring back Wart. Like, if you really boil it down here, Bowser's motivation in this game is dumb. It doesn't matter in a Mario game, but it clearly doesn't capture the princess. It's just kind of whatever. Like, man. It doesn't really pan out. It, they they kind of build it up to be an extra, particularly special super wonder. thing. He's just yeah. And it kind of just, yeah, it kind of just doesn't really like, yeah, it doesn't just, do much. God, bring back Wart, bring back Tatanga. Tatanga, yes, I was just gonna just say that. Make Wario, make Wario the villain. You know, maybe Wario wants to monopolize the Wonder Effect game. I don't know. Just make Wario he wants the bad to, guy. He wants to sell the Wonder Seeds on the black market for higher yeah. price. <laughs> I, I had this I had this crazy deep idea just one night, because like Nintendo's on a remake train now. I'm like, okay, take the Wonder like uh, gimmicks and stuff and then remake Mario Land 2. Why not? Oh, that has yes. some of the most unique level designs in terms of like themes ever. Like it doesn't need to be a one-for-one -one remake, but just like 
hey, we, now we can explore a giant Mario figurine and a house, and now all these levels are brand new with wonder effects. Like, that to me sounds incredible. They won't do it, but it sounds incredible. Uh, but man, I'm really stuck on the whole Mario game having 2D and 3D in the same game idea now. I mean, they, that is very cool. I don't know if we'll ever see it happen, but that is a really cool idea. They mm -hmm. kind of explored it in Mario Odyssey because there were like tiny 2D segments, but it's not really the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. They could they could go further in that direction. Well, a, apart from what we've discussed, Ant, what would you want to see in a sequel if you want to see a sequel? Yeah, I guess just more out there themes. That's why my mind went to Mario Land 2, because that, again, you go inside of a turtle, you get the house. Like, I just way more out there themes because you know we still have grassland ocean stuff so like that, that would be kind of neat and then yeah no bowser um and then some some of the stuff that we said before just a better implementation of of the the badges i would love to see uh, uh the koopalings or it, it like if we're really blowing out the the wonder effect idea i'd love to see the koopalings otherwise brand new bosses the yoshi's island idea of enemies being bosses like all that stuff this is the first mario game in a long time where i feel like I didn't see everything that they had in store. Typically in a Mario game, I play through it and I'm like, they did everything they wanted to. And like, I didn't even expect a Galaxy 2. So that was a mind blow here. It's like, yo, yeah, very clearly they can make a sequel. Like very obviously, I think they can make a sequel because some of the ideas, again, like the star falls and stuff, like very subdued. They can easily make a sequel. Once again, will they? <laughs> I don't know. We said the same about Odyssey, but is what it is. Yeah, I, I think... Um... I, in particular, would like to see a sequel to this game because the entire point of the game was just, like, surprising and delighting the player. Can you imagine? So, like, they already surprised us in so many ways. Singing piranha plants, changing perspectives, that kind of thing. Imagine them trying to one-up themselves. Imagine them trying to do the same thing again, yeah. but, like, still wowing us. I would I would really love that. And, and it was a little unfortunate to hear, uh, you know, it was cool in interviews, them saying how they had so many ideas, but then they were like listing some of the ideas and I'm like, no, 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 don't like tell us. Does that mean you're like definitely right? not gonna do them? Wasn't one of them like a realistic Mario shows up? Y yeah, like a live action Mario. And I'm like, <laughs> that don't would be tell me that. That would be so that great. Would be incredible. Oh my God. That would be amazing. It's crazy that this game also doesn't do anything 8-bit. Like you would think, it is. right? Good point. Wow. You would yeah, think the think game that. would just randomly turn into Mario 3. But I'm really uh, glad it doesn't because they go there too often. That's I mean, fair point. It's, yeah. it's surprising that they didn't do that. Yeah, it is surprising. And I think if anything, that's just that's another little way that I, I really believe they very purposefully tried to mess with our expectations and not do the obvious thing. Mm -hmm. That's what this entire I wouldn't be surprised if someone was like no 8-bit like on purpose, no 8-bit stuff because we do that so often. Just it don't. definitely feels like a Mario game helmed by like a very young studio. It would take some diving into the credits to really get it, but it feels like the old staff ain't working here anymore. It's like all the new guys. Yeah, I think it um, does. There it's was like Miyamoto went to sleep, and so we all made <laughs> yeah. a game while he was sleeping. I thought like some article came out. Um, I remember exactly where I heard it, but I think like a large majority of the staff was just brand new people or just younger people. It, fe it feels like it. Yeah, it really does. Oh, I guess like maybe like one more thing we could very quickly touch on. Um, the the new voices. How are we feeling about the new Mario voices? Oh yeah, that's a big deal, I guess. Yeah, this is good. I perfectly serviceable. Um, yeah. I kind of feel like th it, it's kind of a separate point from the new voice actor thing. But I w I just want to say like the voice acting just overall seems just better. It feels like they. I mean, I've mostly been playing Blue Toad, but even just there. I'm just laughing at the things that he's saying. It just feels like there's more. It feels like there's more personality. It's just, I don't know. It's just funnier. I, I don't know if it's that way with all the different characters. I mean, yeah. I I do love me a good Wowie Zowie. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm a big Wowie Zowie fan. The Wowie Zowie. Wowie Zowie's, 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 Zowie's awesome. Wowie Zowie fans, yep. but I'm a big Wowie Zowie fan. No, Wowie Zowie's great. Uh, one little fun fact, I guess, is if you go on the character select screen, all four of the Yoshis sound slightly different. They all have really? slightly yeah, different pitches to their yeah. voices. I was surprised yeah. that uh, Blue and Yellow Toad have different voices. I did not anticipate Such that. a minor thing, but that's really cool. I think that's It's cool. not necessary, but that's that's this entire game. It's not necessary, but they did it anyway, and it makes that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah, the new that. voices are fine. I'm sure it's Kevin Afghani, I think is how you say it. Um, yeah. I'm sure he's going to be getting 
stuff on Twitter for a while because he's just not Charles. I get it. It does sound different, but I think it sounds great. The personality is on point. He's very expressive. Mario and Luigi sound fantastic. This leaks over into WarioWare. Move it as well. I thought the voice acting was great. Um, it's different, yeah, and different is scary, but it all sounds really good. I, yeah, yeah, I've I, honestly I adapted, what? like, completely already. I, um, mm -hmm. it, honestly, uh, I, I feel like the, the new voices really bring, um, the energy that the old Mario voice had from, like, the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm already a huge fan of the new voice actors. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's, like, a younger guy. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's more obvious with Wario. Uh, mm -hmm. But and yeah, and I didn't play as Mario and Luigi in this game a lot. But like from what I've seen, like yeah, I mean he does a perfectly good job. Like I'm, no no complaints at all. Man, also brother, I'm a Sonic fan. Don't be talking to me about changing voice actors. Oh man. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. I want I, I want to hear this leak over in Tamari as well. Like oh my god, it's it's so tiring. They sound they sound yeah. fine. I'm good. He seems like a nice gentleman yep. on Twitter. That's yeah, all I care just about. Please stay Mario for at least like 40, 50 years. We'll be fine. Just <laughs> yeah. <don't>... No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. You're now just voicing the most recognizable character in entertainment. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Jeez. <laughs> that, that whole process. I have no idea how they even went about that. Um, so, final thoughts on the game. And did you have any other... You, you had some stuff you wanted to say. Have you said all the stuff? All the, all I the mean, beef? Yeah, it's mostly just nitpicking, honestly. Like, because when a game is this good, it only comes down to nitpicking. Um, I will say, I guess there was no real moment that really wowed me, I guess. Like, I was playing the game, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, every time a wonder will pop, I'm like, oh, neat, that one's pretty sick. Um, but nothing was like, oh, whoa. And that's why I just tweeted it. But uh, I like, I think Tropical Freeze is the better game because in my preference for platformers, I like... It, it, it feels more like you're just playing in a place and it's a proper platformer, not really relying on a bunch of gimmicks. But that's such a minor thing. When you're coming to games that are all easily 9 out of 10s, 10 out of 10s, it's such a minor thing. Because, man, this is still one of the best Mario games. It's crazy that it would just say, it's just such a casual thing to say, like, oh, yeah, it's one of the best Mario games, as if that's not a big deal. Like, yeah, that's cra exactly. That's crazy. It's, it's also the sales came out yesterday when we're recording this, and it's the fastest selling Mar like Super Mario game ever. Like, are you kidding oh, me? Oh, really? Oh, didn't even see yeah, that. Yeah, it's at 4.3, I think 4.3 million in two weeks. It's like the fastest selling, quote, Super Mario game, uh, I guess, ever. I think that if I'm reading it correctly. Yeah, and that's uh, nothing. That's the beginning. That's yeah, the tip of the iceberg, too. Yeah. It's going to be a lot yeah. more than that by the end. Probably 15, 20 Abs million absolutely. units pretty easily. Yeah, but like anything I have is really, really minor nitpicks. Because, uh, yeah, in general... Because like, even if the badge system is not that great, I don't have to take advantage of it. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's just, just that the bosses right. are the bosses are the only thing that's like you messed up. But that's yeah. that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What what about you, Nathan? Uh, Any it, final it, thoughts? It just it feels good to be out of the new Super Mario Bros. hole. I'm so glad yeah. we're not playing another new Super Mario Bros. game. It's something that's actually fresh. Um, it, it's I remember like when I finished the game, I was not thinking about the new Super Mario Bros. franchise. I was thinking about where would I place this with like Mario World in Mario Three. And yeah. there has been so many moments where I've always wondered like, am I ever gonna feel this way ever again about a two D Mario game? And it's just I, it's very exciting. Like this is a very exciting time to be a Nintendo fan because um, you know I feel like the Switch era has been in general pretty good for Nintendo games. Uh, and especially the past couple years, I feel like they're really starting to get more creative with their IPs. So I'm just excited to see what's coming next. And yeah, I'm, I'm super glad this game exists. It's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun to play. Yeah, it's it's an exciting... It feels like a new beginning for Mario. Yeah. Yep. Also, and, and we it's... never... We didn't once talk about the new power-ups. Oh, yeah. We should probably oh, yeah, we do did. that. Oh, yeah. There's new power-ups. <laughs> you can play as an elephant oh, yeah. or something. You can play as an yeah, elephant. An elephant. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Wowie zowie, right? Wowie zowie, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're cool. Like they're they're fine. They're not. The bubble just... is clearly showing speedrun potential. That's kind of cool. Oh my gosh. The, oh yeah. Absolutely. The drill yeah. was kind of whatever. But it was all about the elephant. Oh, oh I'm, about I'm, a, elephant. I'm a I'm a wowie zowie enjoyer. The yeah. elephant is like surprisingly versatile. Like you can ground pound through blocks. You can carry water places. You can hit things with your trunk. The music it gets an extra layer of like horns. Yeah. Yeah, also, you can crouch and throw fireballs. I don't know if you guys have tried that. Yeah, but it's, uh, and I he actually it. throws fireballs yeah. with uh, each hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, like Interesting. 
And that's what we have to say about the new power-ups. Good, good discussion. Yeah, more or, yep. less. Um, more or less. Well, yeah. I, I guess we could. We'll, we'll wrap this up. Uh, this has been a whole lot of fun. I would like to thank your good boys for joining me here. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for the invite. And uh, where, where, where can we, where can we find you folks, Nathan? Where do we, where do you, what do you do? Who are you? I am a man that makes Nintendo videos. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel. It's Nathaniel Bandy. Um, but going to be doing a lot more. Mario Bros. Wonder content uh, for the rest of the year, as well as goofy challenges with the game. Excellent. Ant Dude, we all know where to find you. You're always here. We, we, More we, or know, less. we know what you do. More or less. Uh, on, on YouTube and on uh, X. Ugh. On X. You can find Just me on don't. X. Also, uh, I'll take this time to promote my second channel. It's Ant Dude Plays. Yes. I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some wonder stuff uh, on there, I think, uh, not on the main channel. So well, I'll take this opportunity to be a shill for myself. So and dude plays, Do there it. you go. Perfect. Awesome. Excellent. Well, now is the time, since this is an honorary episode of Arlo Cast, this is where we all pretend to wave goodbye at the invisible camera while the outro music plays. Wave goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I'm doing it to my webcam. You have to wave, Bye -bye. you have to be waving. Have a, are, you, are you waving? I'm doing it. I can't I'm see waving. you, but I hope you are. Good. I'm doing it. Doesn't matter if no one's in the room. I'm Wait, staring bye. very hard at your icon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> bye. bye. All right, bye.